While Cyberpunk is incredibly fun to play, and in my opinion, one of the best RPG releases of 2020, it's no secret that CD Projekt Red wasn't as forthcoming as they should have been regarding the overall playability of the game, especially on consoles. Yeah, it's it's pretty bad on last gen. I mean, we've had performance issues non-stop, game-breaking bugs that completely pull the brakes on story progression, and there were even some features that for one reason or another didn't make it into the final product. So today, we're going to be taking a look at 10 features that were removed from Cyberpunk 2077. Let's jump into it. Number 10, a dynamic and challenging weather system. From Grand Theft Auto 5 to CD Projekt Red's own Witcher 3, having a weather system is nothing new to the world of AAA gaming. And while it's true that Cyberpunk does explore a slight variety when it comes to the weather in Night City, it must be said that the development team promised us something a lot more dynamic in the lead up to its release. When discussing the believability of Cyberpunk's setting back in 2019, UI coordinator Alvin said the team was in the process of creating a weather system that would take pollution and global warming into account, spitting out dangerous cycles ranging from sandstorms to even things like acid rain. Because of this, the dynamic weather system would change how the game was played and cause NPCs to react in the appropriate manner. But there seems to be no real effect brought about by a change of weather in and out of Night City. And although it's true that you can experience a sandstorm once in a pre-rendered mission, this is nothing as complex as a system that causes NPCs to shelter when the rain starts to fall. Number 9. Purchasable Properties So after finishing up your selected prequel, you'll find that V will spend a fair amount of time at his apartment in the Watson Mega Building, where you'll have your very own experience of what it means to be poor in Night City. And regardless of how many eddies you earn or what life path you've chosen for yourself, there appears to be no option to upgrade your living status from slumlord to penthouse owner. This is, once more, a far cry from what we was promised by CD Projekt Red earlier run in the year. Clearly inspired by the property mogul lifestyle you can live in Los Santos, and led on by quotes from a gameplay reveal that references to V's current apartment, a fan reached out to the developer to ask whether this meant new apartments could be both unlocked and bought during the runtime of the game. This then led on to CD Projekt Red actually confirming this as a feature, only to backtrack just before launching the game earlier this month. Now, whether this is due to become a feature at a later stage, I have no idea. But it would have been a great detail to include, and overall it would be nice to spend some of those hard-earned eddies on some of the other properties in the game. I'm sure we can all agree on that. Number 8. A Trusty Companion Definitely one of the most memorable missions in Cyberpunk, The Heist, sees V and Jackie hiding out in the luxurious Compeki Plaza, where they use a Militech flathead bot to infiltrate the system and zero a rival Netrunner. And although this is nothing more than a pre-existing route that needs to be followed to proceed with your playthrough, things were actually meant to end a lot differently. You see, the flathead bot was supposed to end up in V's hands after the mission, allowing it to be used to both hack and double-team enemies in a coordinated fashion. Now, since V's own abilities rivaled that of the Flathead, the decision was made to cut it from his arsenal, leaving only Dum Dum and Julie to follow us around in one of the weirdest glitches to ever come out in Cyberpunk. Yeah, there was a weird bug going around where Dum Dum would teleport to you, he would follow you throughout your whole playthrough, and kind of act as a companion, and as annoying as that was, at least we got somewhat of a taste of what having a companion would be like in this game. Number 7. Amazing AI So let's take a look at what CD Projekt Red promised us regarding the setting of Cyberpunk 2077. While there's no doubt that Night City is a monster in its own right, with verticality that has yet to be seen in another RPG of its caliber, Expectations were high when the development team announced it would be filled with NPCs from all facets of life, with dynamic designs and animations to set themselves apart from one another. 
In fact, according to earlier interviews, these NPCs would not only fill Night City, but have their own daily routines that would contribute to the overall believability of the city, making it the most realistic of any setting in an open world game to date. I quote, We've greatly enhanced our crowd and community systems to create the most believable city in any open world game. The city streets are bustling with crowds of people from all facets of life, all living their lives with a full day slash night cycle. Thousands of NPCs will have actual daily routines throughout Night City's six districts, including a ton of robust and varied characters with cyborg implants, unique designs and animations, and day and night cycles. Instead, what we're left with is a far cry from what we were promised, with unimportant NPCs having no day slash night cycle, single line dialogue responses, the inability to move past any obstacle that happens to be in their way, and even the incapacity to defend themselves when your fist does all the talking. And although expecting more from random filler NPCs than a simple crouch or run animation when combat erupts is probably unrealistic, it is what was promised by CD Projekt Red. Overall, this is another part of the game that I felt was kind of overhyped and underdelivered to a certain extent. Number 6. Life Paths That Actually Mean Something Yet another feature that was thoroughly hyped up by CD Projekt Red was its life path choice, which was said to be game changing at the very least. Not only would each life path come with its own prequel to play through, but it would also have an influence on how well V would fare in both Night City and the Badlands surrounding it. Expectations were set even higher when a trailer dedicated to the life path system was made and released by the developer, showing that each life path would have pros and cons depending on the type of NPC you were talking to at that moment. But what we got in the end was really nothing more than the usual background choice that comes with most games within the RPG genre. And while separate prequels were a great addition to Cyberpunk, the fact that these paths pretty much joined up with one another in under 40 minutes really can't be ignored. And after a complete playthrough of the title, it feels like the only true influence of this choice was an extra dialogue option every now and again which is way less than what was promised to us by the developer. Number 5. Intricate and Personal Hacking With an attribute score directly linked to netrunning, we always knew that hacking was going to be quite important in the world of cyberpunk. That being said, take one look at one of the old E3 trailers of the game and you'll see that hacking used to come with some pretty insane looking animations, which look a whole lot different from the hacking we can currently do in game. Rather than being able to jack into the heads of fallen enemies to reveal an elaborate network map of an entire gang building and enemy layout, like the trailer suggested, CD Projekt Red chose to eliminate this feature and replace it with the ping system chosen from the quick hacking window. With a high enough technical ability, you can still jack into enemy terminals though, but since there are far better ways of earning some eddies, the minigame just simply isn't worth it. Would I prefer to do the same in return for some more enemy intel? Absolutely. Number 4. Wall Running We always knew that Cyberpunk would be filled with a number of choices, especially when exploring Night City and completing the various side missions spread throughout it. And to the credit of CD Projekt Red, this is exactly what they achieved by allowing various dialogue options, cybernetic enhancements, and character builds to influence how missions could be tackled, sometimes even avoiding boss fights entirely which would otherwise be enforced. A feature that fit very neatly into this category of choice was the ability to wall run and plant your mantis blades into a surface to suspend yourself above enemies. Previously shown in a gameplay trailer, fans of stealth builds became excited by the prospect of making it through an enemy encampment and taking out enemies by leaping down on them. This feature was, however, unfortunately removed from the game because of design reasons, which is pretty much development talk for not being able to pull something off, and although the fact remains that there is more than enough flexibility in Cyberpunk, the ability to be a net and wall runner would have been pretty cool. Number 3. A Corruptible and Complex Policing System 
One of the most criticised features of Cyberpunk has to be the way that crime and policing takes place in Night City, with CD Projekt Red promising a far more elaborate system than we currently have at our disposal. Previous gameplay trailers and write-ups told the story of a dynamic system where the NCPD would rely on you to eliminate or arrest criminals, and would do the same to you if taking part in an illegal activity. This does, however, appear to have been nothing more than a goddamn dream, as the system we currently have is incredibly flawed. To put it simply, when you do a crime, police will randomly spawn around you, and the system doesn't depend on your crime being witnessed. They don't thank you for any assistance you've given them, don't attempt to question or arrest you, and refuse to attack gang members participating in illegal activities when chasing after you. Oh, and not to mention, apparently the police don't even know how to drive in this game. It all comes back to the believability of this city, which is where the NCPD fails miserably. And in a corrupt metropolis ruled by Eddies, an option to bribe police officials into eliminating enemies or refusing to arrest you would have been an incredible feature to keep. And in general, I do wish the policing system kind of lived up to the hype that they made it out to be, and just was a bit more complex than what's currently in game. Number 2. Customizable Vehicles Now, since Cyberpunk was always set to be an open world game where exploration would be rewarded, travel throughout Night City became a hot topic of discussion. This caused Miles Toast, a designer at CD Projekt Red, to disclose that the team were in the process of exploring vehicle customization, which, although not new to the scene, was definitely an anticipated feature for players who wanted to race through the neon-clad streets of the metropolis. Curiosity about the subject then led to the release of the Rides of the Dark Future trailer, which showcased a grand total of five classes of vehicles and promised that each category would be useful in its own unique way. One of these categories was the sports class, which was specifically said to have exchangeable parts perfect for street racing. But not only is racing not really a major thing in Cyberpunk, there seems to be no real significance between the various hyped up classes of vehicles found throughout the city, with the option to customize having been cut for one reason or another. Number 1. Third Person Cutscenes Last but not least, we have a feature that would have added a lot more of V into the stunning visuals surrounding Night City. Rather than limiting Cyberpunk as a first-person experience, CD Projekt Red played around with the possibility of adding third-person cutscenes that showed off the character you worked so hard to create at the beginning of the game. Considering that we only ever get to see V in the options menu or when locking into a mirror, this little development would have been a breath of fresh air if chosen to feature. I mean, you guys can let me know in the comment section down below. Do you think this would have been a great thing to add? I know the whole first person only thing definitely keeps the immersion flowing in the game, but I can't help but feel that this would have been a great thing to add. Anyway, I hope you guys did enjoy this video today. That was 10 features removed from Cyberpunk before release. Uh, if you are new around here and you did enjoy this video, be sure to drop a like down below and subscribe. I put out Cyberpunk content every other day on the channel.